Everyone, this is just sort of a side unscripted video on a little phenomenon I just stumbled across accidentally while um, working on a different, entirely different phenomenon. So I have here two identical microscope slides, uh, and they both were sandwiched with a piece of aluminum foil and uh, on the top and a piece of aluminum foil on the bottom. And this has just been, you know, capped on, taped down to the glass. And then on one of these, I applied uh, about uh, seven kilovolts to the top, and this was the cathode. And on the other, I applied zero volts, and then I baked them both at about 300 degrees for two minutes. And as you can see, there's a significant difference in the texture and everything here. And check this out. As you can see, the cathode is completely not bonded. There was zero um, adhesion between the cathode and the bottom surface of this glass, and that's for both of them. But on the top of this one, the aluminum has formed an almost indelible coating. Like I'm, I'm scratching it, but it's not removing the aluminum from the, from the glass. So it's really quite firmly bonded. It's quite interesting. Uh, and on the uh, zero volt control, um, well, there's, there's no bonding there. It's uh, just, you know, standard glass aluminum foil. There's no, there's no adhesion. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I discovered this just totally accidentally. That's great. Oh, look. Uh, while working on, you know, thermal polling, uh, I was getting some very interesting crazing and, uh, uh, you know, breakdown of the glass and um, breakdown of my silicon wafers here that I was using as a polling substrate. And uh, I wanted to see whether the same phenomena would occur with um, aluminum. And instead of, you know, having the same thing happen, uh, the aluminum just bonded quite firmly down. Um, and so apparently this is called uh, electro adhesion. And so what's going on here is there's sort of an attractive force, which is higher than you might expect based on just a purely you know, uh, electrostatic capacitive um, calculation, um, apparently. And so the uh, aluminum foil is stuck down to the surface of the uh, glass temporarily. And then once there's this, you know, intimate contact with the um, glass, uh, electrochemical reactions start to occur, which are permanent. And so even when you remove the electric field, uh, the glass remains quite bonded. Um, so that's pretty interesting. And the high temperature obviously um, increases the rate of these uh, electrical chem electrochemical reactions. There's some pretty interesting discussion in the literature about this method. Um, in fact, in some cases, this bonding can be so strong, it's a vacuum tight, you know, like high vacuum tight, which is quite interesting and I think could be used practically. I might be able to use that. Um, for some high vacuum experiments, for feed throughs and stuff. This works with a number of different materials. Uh, this is uh, soda lime glass, but this uh, borosilicate and aluminum also works fine. And apparently um, uh, copper, other materials like that also work. Um, the main concern is uh, oxide layer. So uh, aluminum does form an oxide layer, but it's not uh, very fast. You know, it's a very thin, layer and as soon as it's formed, you know, a couple atoms thick, it's, uh, it stops forming. Um, but if it's artificially enhanced, you know, anodized or something like that, this effect does not occur. Um, so that's interesting. Also, I tried doing some experimenting with uh, plastics. Um, this is a uh, 1 16th inch acrylic and this aluminum foil. And it didn't quite work. Um, and indeed, it doesn't seem to be quite that common in the literature about uh, using plastics. So I'm not sure actually what the uh, difference in chemical reaction or electrochemical reaction is between uh, the acrylic and the glass. Certainly the glass is more um, electrically active at high temperatures and high voltage. Um, and you can, in my polling experiments, the uh, glass just completely breaks down at 300 degrees and uh, about 10 kilovolts and uh, the arc begins to like physically ablate the material. So that's quite interesting. 
But uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to work that well with plastic. I, I don't really have a lot of time to test this out, you know, rigorously. So um, I'll just have to leave it at that. But that's quite interesting. And then I tried uh, whether maybe we could uh, electro pattern this. That is, you know, have a, a cathode or an anode that is shaped such that um, the bonding only occurs in some areas. And so I tried out a new method that I just discovered a couple of days ago too accidentally, uh, which is using um, solder paste in a laser cutter and uh, sintered, you know, some solder paste and this was a hundred millimeters a minute at two and a half watts. This is a blue diode laser and uh, it sintered just fine and then I put it on glass and uh, tried doing this electrochemical, uh, electroadhesion thing and uh, it did, failed miserably, so that's quite interesting. Um, so that's about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll have a more rigorous video out soon, but just a little side thing I thought wasn't cool.